welcome everyone. It is Cannabis News. I'm your host, Joe Claire. It's September 9th, 2019. The show, as always, is presented by the Marijuana Times. Marijuanatimes.org. You can find us there. A lot of great articles. Click the video tab to find the show. If that is what you are seeking today. We're talking about a dispensary in Seattle, which has launched a recycling program for cannabis uh, containers and packaging and such. Uh, also, some marijuana, medical marijuana law changes in Oklahoma, and a New York college student apparently has been arrested in Russia for possession of marijuana. We'll talk a little bit about that. All those stories, in fact, the first, of course, Cannabis News is brought to you by NatureSide, nature-side.com, and their organic, all-natural pesticides. Grow safe and poison-free. Don't use harmful chemicals on what you are growing. Don't use banned pesticides. Be regulatory compliant in the state that you are growing, and all of these things are possible with NatureSide, nature-side.com, a proud sponsor of Cannabis News. Thank you, NatureSide. This first story by Jason Sander at MarijuanaTimes.org. Seattle Dispensary launches cannabis packaging recycle program to reduce waste in an effort to reduce the amount of bulky cannabis packaging the consumers throw out when they have finished their purchases. A dispensary in West Seattle has started an incentive program for customers who will bring in their trash. The owner of the dispensary, Canna West Seattle, Miriam Mirnategi, decided to initiate the program for customers who want to help the environment by bringing in their garbage. The program is rather forward-thinking and a noble one, especially considering the discarded cannabis packaging doesn't even have to be from their store. We don't think this is something only we should do, but we are really hoping to start the conversation. Minitegi told a local Seattle publication, we are really hoping to create a better connection between the cannabis industry and the environment in general. Uh, back in August, the Washington Post ran a story documenting the amount of waste and potential pollution coming from legal marijuana packaging Publication documented the amount of dube tube and mylar bags that could be found floating in Puget Sound. So now hopefully this is something that comes, you know, this is good stuff. This is all good stuff. This is not government mandated stuff. This is stuff that dispensaries decided to do on its own. Other dispensaries will do so because they know it's a good thing to do. And if, if for more cynical reason, it's good publicity. Obviously, for whatever reason they do it, the end result is less packaging. Um, obviously, there's certain... There's a lot of regulations when it comes to packaging for different states in the United States. Uh, it makes stuff like reusable packaging difficult. Though the focus, as um, Jason's article points out, has been on childproofing and such. Not necessarily what's going to happen to the packaging after it's been used and discarded and it no longer is no longer useful. And those things will be addressed, obviously, as time goes on with good ideas like this one. This next story from TulsaWorld.com. Straight out of Oklahoma, among marijuana law changes, firearm ownership, access to patient info, and more business requirements. Of course, we've talked a lot about Oklahoma on the show, and they're very quick and well done implementation and enacting of medical marijuana laws. A lot of patients, a lot of dispensaries, a lot of growers, a lot of everything. As Tulsa Word points out, for more than a year, the legality of Oklahoma's medical cannabis program rested on the text of State Question 788 and emergency rules approved by state agencies. But this week, House Bill 2612, an extensive regulatory framework known as the Unity Bill, and accompanying bills are in effect creating new requirements for patients and business owners. H.R. 2612 was largely the product of three months of meetings between industry members, advocates, and a bipartisan bicameral medical marijuana legislative working group. Wow, a lot of people. House Majority Floor Leader John Eccles, a Republican from Oklahoma City, was a primary sponsor, as was Senator Greg McCourtney, and Republican from Ada, Working Group Co-Chairman. Um, there's a lot of different rules, including uh, law protects licensed patients' rights to own firearms despite federal law barring what it deems as illegal drug users from lawfully possessing guns. Uh, however, Eccles has said he has not heard of, the federal heard of federal prosecutions for such a violation in other medical marijuana states, or indeed have been, I think, few. I believe I read somewhere that there was 12 out of many, many such cases that are actually prosecuted to any extent. Could be wrong about that. I have to go look up that number again. But if memory serves me, which <laughs> sometimes it doesn't, it's a very, very small number. A uh, portion of the law allows employers and safety-sensitive physicians 
such as firefighting, heavy machinery operation, and hazardous materials to consider an employee's patient status when making hiring decisions. Employers can lawfully take action against staff who are under the influence at work. But patients with jobs not deemed safety sensitive remain protected from discrimination if it is on the sole basis of having a patient license or a positive drug test for THC. Um, a lot of uh, new business requirements as well. Business applicants are now required to include a certificate of compliance from the respective jurisdictions that discusses zoning among, along with fire, waste, and building codes. Um, additionally, new law states that businesses must implement seat to sale tracking, which McCourney and other lawmakers have said will mitigate the chances for illegal product diversion into the black market. Yes, yes, the dreaded product diversion into the black market because of some marijuana that was grown in Oklahoma and was designated for, for a medical marijuana patient in Oklahoma. If it somehow lands in the hands of someone who doesn't qualify in Oklahoma, maybe in Missouri, then somehow the world will end. Because that's what we have to worry about. We're worried about treating patients. What we have to worry about is there's just too much and some of it leaks out and some people get their hands on what? Contraband cannabis? This is such a non-problem. Even if a bunch of it got out, it'll be fine. Everyone will be fine. In fact, less people will be sick. So, so, so dumb. HB 2, uh, 2612 also upstates updates packaging and labeling requirements indicating labels must have information on product potency and whether they've been tested for contaminants uh, banned on packaging they could appeal to children has been in effect uh, since emergency rules were enacted in august of 2018 um, a lot of other uh, heavy regulations bud scott who leads the oklahoma cannabis industry association and sits on the food safety standard standards board uh, says he has concerns about what the state is now asking of businesses. As an example, we said HB 2612 requires product testing to be conducted by properly licensed laboratory, but applications for laboratory licenses aren't yet available, <laughs> which is really how the government does things. That's what's going to end up happening here. Overall, the government's going to get too involved. Things were fine. Now the government's going to come in with the regulations, the restrictions, because, you know, we can't have diversion. We can't have, you know... Uh, any kind of problems, it has to be tightly regulated and restricted because apparently medical marijuana is very dangerous and volatile, and the government has to track it and see what's going on every step of the way. Um, he also noted there's a mandate in Senate Bill 162 and in the OMMA's request for new or newest set of emergency rules, ordering growers and processors to separate their harvests in 10-pound batches and test samples from each one. He said the requirement could become cost prohibitive for many businesses. Of course, they point out uh, that big business, as I point out many times, big businesses, large growers, they don't care about regulations. They're fine. They can absorb the cost. It's the low, the smaller, more vulnerable businesses that can be driven right out of businesses by stupid things like divide your product into ten pound batch, batches and get a, a sample from each one, and then send that sample to uh, testing laboratories that don't exist yet because there are no licenses. It's time now for the government to step in in Oklahoma and see how much they can restrict the industry, how much they can screw things up like I just did with that graphic. I meant to do that. It was a microcosm of what the government of Oklahoma is going to do to the medical marijuana program. They're going to screw it up like a bad graphic or a graphic in the wrong place, or a graphic that's too big, whatever. If you're listening to the audio version of the show, you have no idea what just happened. But if you're watching the video version, you know I uh, made a snafu. A snafu, a graphic snafu, if you will. It happens from time to time, as regular watchers of Cannabis News are well aware. Hopefully it doesn't get too bad in Oklahoma. I don't know. I mean, they're going to drive out a lot of smaller growers, uh, retail shops with the more regulations you have, the more of these businesses are going to be driven out. And all you're going to have left are the bigger businesses that can absorb these costs and comply with these regulations. Some would say unnecessary regulations. I would be one of those people for one of, a lot of this stuff. I mean, you know, the one, the, the, the thing about the firearms, that's great because they're protecting their patients from federal law. Uh, but the rest of it, especially the business requirements are just putting more costs Onto businesses and making sure that at least some of them will go out of business, not because they're not good at their job, but simply because they can't get up to code or whatever with all these regulations. Some people say, 
oh, well, that's great. You know, we can't have that. We, they got to follow regulations. If they can't, they should go out of business. Well, those same people will then complain when there's less choice and there's uh, the Walmart of marijuana dominates everything. There's only a few places you can go and it's a monopoly and oligarchy and blah, blah, blah. Can't have it both ways. Can't drive all the small businesses out of business and then complain when there's only a few big ones left. You created the problem. So, you know, shut up. <laughs> so last story from USA Today. Dot com hit the wires, if you will, earlier today. New York college student arrested in Russia over medical marijuana possession. That's right. Immediately, that doesn't sound like a good idea, at least to me, but apparently it did to this person. New York college student was arrested in Russia for allegedly possessing medical marijuana. Audrey Lorber, a student at Pace University in New York, was stopped at Pulkovo Airport in St. Petersburg with a little over 19 grams of cannabis. According to a news release from the city's court system published by the Moscow Times last week, she pleaded guilty to drug possession, a charge that carries a sentence of up to three years, according to the Times. The defendant's patent issued in the U.S. on marijuana use as part of a medical program doesn't extend to Russian territory, the news release said. The statement was posted on the encrypted messaging platform Telegram September 2nd, but it's unclear when Lorber was taken into custody. Lorber is accused of violating... Article 228 of the Criminal Code of the Russian Federation. That doesn't sound good. In 2018, 100,000 people were arrested in Russia for breaking the same law, according to the Moscow Times. Now, obviously, a lot of details are left out about this, why she pleaded guilty, you know, if that was the good thing, if it's going to get less time, if it was stupid, she's going to get three years. But what strikes me is even someone who doesn't know a lot about Russia, and I'm one of those people, I don't know a ton about Russia, I know some about Russian history and, you know, the Soviet Union and the czars and stuff like that. I've seen some documentaries and whatnot. I'm certainly not any kind of expert or even close to having any knowledge whatsoever of Russian laws. But if you're someone like that, someone like me, someone obviously like um, Aubrey here, Audrey, what's her name? Audrey. What is it? What have you ever heard about Russia that make you think to yourself, yeah, they're probably pretty cool with that? They're real chill laid-back people, if I walk into the airport with 19 grams of cannabis and I'm discovered, the cops come like, oh, that's okay. Yes, here's some vodka to go with your medical marijuana. No. No. Nothing you've ever heard about Russia makes you think they're going to be cool with you sauntering into one of their airports with weed. They're going to be chill about that. What have you ever heard about Russia that makes you think that their law enforcement is going to be chill about anything? What anecdotal evidence do you have then it's going to be cool with them to walk in with some weed. And you can't think that, oh, well, I have medical marijuana in this place, so it, I'm, I always tell the Ruskies, hey, I'm a medical marijuana patient. They don't know what that is. They don't care. You're in their country with illegal drugs, according to Article 228. They arrest 100,000 people of their own people every year for that. But they're going to be cool with you doing it. Because Russia is such a chill, laid-back place. It's not Jamaica. Now, if she got caught in Jamaica with 19 grams and they threw the book at her, I'd be like, oh, wow, that's pretty weird. You wouldn't expect that. But this is not Jamaica. It's Russia. There's a difference. Look it up. <laughs> there are many differences between Jamaica and Russia. This is one of them. The whole weed thing. Thank you, everybody, for checking out the show. It's a new week. Here at the Marijuana Times, we're here five days a week. Of course, subscribe to the Marijuana Times on YouTube to find this show. Vimeo as well. We're on Apple Podcasts. If you want to check us out on there and get the audio version of the show. Thank you for watching and listening and sharing the truth about cannabis with this show. I remember somebody in YouTube commenting about the Kiss shirt, to show the Kiss shirt next time. There it is right there. It was uh, Destroyer 1976. Not a huge Kiss fan. I know some of their songs are pretty cool and all that. I like it. But more than anything else, I like the shirt itself. So that is why I wear it. So whoever made that comment on YouTube, on one of the YouTube videos, there you go. Shout out to Kiss. <laughs> make sure. I'm sure they'll just make their day. <laughs> the guys in Kiss I'm like, we got a shout out on Cannabis News? Wow. Now things are really moving. Thanks, everybody, for checking out the show. We'll see you next time right here on Cannabis News. <laughs> <laughs>